Welcome to another Fast Tech video. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. In today's demonstration, I'm going to be showing you guys how to jailbreak your PS3. I'm going to be showing you guys how to install custom firmware and install apps like Multiman so you can run your backups. Other benefits of owning a jailbroken PS3 include the ability to run modded lobbies, use emulators, and to use the disk drive of your choice, which I've covered in a previous video. This video applies to all fat PS3s and PS3 Slim 2000 and 2100 series systems. The process for jailbreaking PS3 Slim 2500, 3000 and the PS3 Super Slim series is slightly different and I'll be covering that in a later video. FastTechStore.com carries all PS3 parts and we offer a lifetime warranty with free worldwide shipping. Check the links in the description box and the pinned comment and you can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. This video was brought to you by the Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver that disassembles all kinds of electronic devices. Let's get started. Before we start, we have to make sure we're on firmware 4.90 and you can go to system settings and then go down to system information to check your system firmware. To do a jailbreak, we're gonna need a PC and a USB drive. Check the description box if you need one. Once our USB drive is plugged in, we're gonna locate it in our PC, we're gonna right click on it, and then we're gonna press format. This window is gonna pop up. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna select FAT32. That's the format our USB drive needs to be. In the label, we're gonna type in whatever we want then press start. Please note that any data you have on the USB will be removed. Then press OK and then press yes. Now our USB drive is ready to load the files that we need. We're gonna create a new folder in here called PS3 uppercase. Then we're gonna open up that folder we created and create another folder in there called update also uppercase. Now let's open up Google Chrome or whatever browser you use because we're going to need to download some files. Let's Google search PS3 4.90 firmware. You're going to need this firmware if you're on an older firmware than 4.90. We're going to click on this link on Sony's official website. Scroll all the way down and click on this option here that says reinstall using a computer. You're going to see a pop down and then you're going to click on this button that says download PS3 update. If nothing happens, right click on it and press save link as. Then we're going to save this file inside the PS3 and inside the update folder that we created. If your download doesn't start, chances are you're getting blocked by Google Chrome. So go in here, press download, press keep and then press keep anyway. Once the file finishes downloading, open up your USB drive and the PS3 and then the update folder to make sure that it is in there. We see that it's in there, so now we can proceed to the next step. Then we're going to open up our browser again. We're going to search for PS3 4.90 CFW. You're going to see this link from PSX Place. If this link is no longer working, check the links in the description box and we'll have updated links for you. Now I have a CEX system that I'm using in this example and all 60, 80 gig backwards compatible systems are CEX systems. But you need to figure out which system you have and I'll include a detailed guide in the description box that will help you determine what kind of system you have. So I'm going to download the CEX file because that's what I need. And once again, if you are confused about what file you need to download, check the description box. I'm going to save this file into the root directory of the USB that I prepared. You are going to need WinRAR and I'll include link for that in the description box as well. That file is downloaded. We have all the files we need to perform a jailbreak. So now I'm going to show you guys some apps that you should download. The first one is called Multiman. This will allow you to run your backups, which is why most people jailbreak their PS3 anyways. So we're going to grab Multiman Base, right click on download, press save link as, and save it in the root directory of the USB that we prepared. Make sure you're not getting cock blocked by Google by checking your downloads and making sure that it is going through. Next, we're going to download Irisman, which will allow us to copy files from an NTFS based drive and since most PS3's ISOs are over 4 gigs you are going to need this app. Next let's grab React PSN. 
and also save it on the root directory of our USB drive. Next, let's grab RetroArch, and this is a great emulator if you want to run Nintendo NES and old retro console games. So let's grab the CEX version because we have a CEX system. Next, we're going to grab Mana Guns and File Manager. So you're just going to search for it on Google and it should come up on Brewology. So we're going to download Mana Guns and we're going to download File Manager. Now let's make sure all the files we downloaded are on our USB drive. You don't have to pick all of these apps that I picked. You could pick your own, but these files need to be here in order for us to do our jailbreak. Now that I made sure all the files are where they need to be, I'm going to unplug the USB and plug it into my PS3 and the first or the second USB port. Now let's go to settings and then let's go to system update and we're going to go to update via storage media. Then we're going to see the screen and we're going to press OK. And keep in mind that you only need to do the step if you're not on firmware 4.90 OFW already. If you're already on 4.90 OFW as in original firmware, you can skip straight to the jailbreak part of this video, which will be timestamped. Once this progress bar finishes, the PS3 is going to restart. Once the PS3 restarts, we're going to open up the internet browser. Then press the triangle button to bring up this menu. Now we want to set this to use blank page and it's going to say about colon blank. I would also like to take this opportunity to tell you about fasttech.ca and yes, this was a plug you weren't expecting, but the bills have to be paid. We stock all kinds of PS3 parts from PS3 fat OG systems to Wait, slims to super dangerous? slims. And we offer a lifetime warranty with free worldwide shipping. Now we can continue with the rest of the video. Once we've set this to about blank, we're going to press OK, press X on the controller. And when we return here, we're going to press triangle, then go to tools and then go to delete cookies. Press yes, press triangle again, go to tools. This time delete search history, press yes, go back, triangle tools, then delete cache, press yes, do the same thing for delete authentication information and then press yes. This is an optional step in most cases, but it does help if you're getting errors. Then exit the browser when you're done. And then we're going to go to the settings tab once again. And then we're going to go down to date and time settings. You want to set date and time to be set via internet. So that way you have an accurate clock, which is something we're going to need to jailbreak our PS3 successfully. Then we're going to reload the internet browser on our PS3. Then we're going to go to file address entry or you can press the start button on your PS3 controller and enter this address, which is ps3toolset.com. Now, if you're watching this in the future and this address is no longer working, check the links in the description box and the pinned comment because this link is subject to change. So if it's no longer working, go check down there for a new updated working link. It is going to ask you if you want it to allow to run a plugin, just press yes. And once you do, you're going to see this page, which is the PlayStation 3 tool set. Now there are some checks that are going to be performed at this time. So do not close this window or do anything else on your PS3 while this is loading. I've sped up part of this video in the interest of time. Once the process is complete, you'll see a check mark on the top right and these QR codes. You're going to press OK. Now we're going to go up to System Manager. We're going to wait for this page to load. It could take up to a few seconds. At the very top, it says Flash Memory. We're going to press on that folder and then we're going to press Save Flash Memory Backup. And we're going to save it to where it says USB, which is the USB that we've prepared at the beginning of this video and should be inserted in your PS3 at this time. Then we're going to press that button and now the system is going to start saving the NAND flash onto the USB drive. And this is important in case anything goes wrong.
God forbid, you have a backup of your NAND flash that you can use later to restore your system in case there's a problem like a power outage or your PS3 just gets bricked for whatever reason. I've sped up this part of the video in the interest of time. But this step is very, very important and make sure you have a valid dump before you proceed. Once successful, you're going to see that check mark on the top right corner. And that means we have a successful dump. Now we're going to press close and we're going to go back to the menu. There's an option here that says flash memory patch. Press X on that and then we're going to press load patch via HTTP. Now it's loading the patch that we need. I have a 256 MB NAND system that I'm working with and these ones finish a lot quicker. But if you have a 16 MB NOR system, this is going to take much, much, much longer. But trust the process and let it do its thing. And once you're done, you should see a green check mark on the right side as seen here. And once we see that, we're going to press close. Now we're going to go back to flash memory patch. And now we're going to select apply loaded patch. Now I must warn you that this step can break your console if you cut the power to your system and you're going to be met with this warning. We're going to press yes. Do not turn off your PS3 while this is happening. Once you're done, you're going to see a green check mark on the top right. There's the green check mark on the top right corner here. And now we're ready for the next step. Now we're going to press close and then we're going to close the browser. And then we're going to turn off our PS3 and restart the system. While this PS3 restarts, I'd like to remind everyone to check out fasttechstore.com for PS3 parts. Now let's unplug the USB from our PS3 and let's plug it back into the laptop. We're going to open up that PS3 and then the update folder and we're going to rename the original firmware into something else because this is where we're going to be placing our CFW and they can't be a name conflict. So let's rename it to PS3 update original or whatever you want. It just can't be named what it was before. Then we're going to go in the root directory of our USB. We're going to open up this file using WinRAR. It's a free to use software. I'll include links in the description box. We're going to open up the PS3 and the update folder in the RAR file. And then we're going to extract the PS3 update file that's in there, which is our CFW. And we're going to extract it where our original firmware was before. I've sped up this part of the video in the interest of time. So now we have our CFW where our original firmware was and it is named PS3 update no e dot PUP. And now we can unplug our USB from the laptop and plug it back into the PS3. Now that we have the CEX file loaded on our USB, we're going to go back to settings and then we're going to go to system update. Go to update via storage media and you're going to see 4.90 evil nat CEX. You're going to press X, then press the right direction pad, press accept, and it will start installation of 4.90 EvilNAT CEX, which is the custom firmware we're going to be installing. This is how fast the PS3 would do updates if you had an SSD purchased from fasttechstore.com, which is a video we're going to be doing in the future. We offer all YouTube viewers a discount if you enter the coupon code YouTube during checkout. Once this installation finishes, the PS3 is going to restart. And once you see the screen that says Evil Nat, that means you've successfully installed custom firmware on your PS3. We're going to log in on our user. And when we go to the game tab, we're going to see some options here that did not exist before. We're going to go to package manager. Then we're going to go to install package files. Then we're going to go down to standard. And in here we will see all the apps that we've loaded on our USB drive. At this point, all we have to do is select one and press X and it will install. I'm going to start with file manager. This one's going to install relatively quickly, especially because I've sped up this footage. You're going to be returned to the main XMB menu. And now you'll see that file manager is there. 
we're going to repeat the same step for all the rest of the apps that we've loaded on the USB. I will speed up parts of this video in the interest of time. On a later date, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use all of these apps effectively and in detail. I know there's several tutorials on YouTube already, but none of them explain things as well as I do. So I'm going to be doing you guys that favor on a later date. But make sure you press that subscribe button and click that bell so you don't miss it. RetroArch by far is going to take the longest time out of all these apps that I've downloaded because it's larger in size by a huge distance. So anyways, now we have all these apps installed. And you got Multiman, you got React PSN, we got RetroArch. All these apps are extremely useful. Multiman will let you run your backups directly from your PS3's hard drive. RetroArch, of course, allows you to run emulators, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, etc. Then we got Irisman, which will allow you to load files and ISOs off an NTFS drive, which is very handy if you want to use files larger than 4 gigs. Then we got Multiman. This will allow you to run ISOs directly off your PS3's hard drive. This is perhaps the most popular PS3 app of all time. On a later date, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use all of these apps in detail. So press that subscribe button. And that concludes this Fast Tech presentation. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching another Fast Tech video. Before you leave, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell next to the subscribe button to get notifications. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out and I'll see you in the next one.